This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. What, what was your what was your feeling watching last night's uh, basketball game? Because I remember I thought about this before the game, and I don't remember what the money line was, but it was kind of crazy. I think it was like plus twenty five hundred uh, to uh, on the other way. I'm mean, thinking like, who's got an extra ten thousand dollars to put money down on what feels like a guaranteed win, and all they get out of it is four four hundred dollars? And I started thinking, well, what would it take for Greensboro? to beat Arkansas. And then I watched that first half. Brazil gets hurt, can't hit a shot at all. They can't miss. And I'm like, this is the perfect recipe. What were you feeling watching that last night? I was thinking in the first half that Arkansas looked like a team trying to look like the number nine team in the country rather than doing the things that got them to that point. You know, and sometimes you do that. You, you, uh, it's like uh, trying to justify a ranking or something. I, you know, there were, uh, some things that, I mean, Arkansas missed 12 consecutive shots. Uh, they weren't hitting the three ball early. And, you know, we're starting to see, I mean, it, 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 this team is going to get challenged with a lot of zones this year until they can prove they can hit the, the outside shot. And so, really, I, that's probably pretty good practice for the SEC season. You know, but, I mean, they were favored by 17 and a half, I think I saw in the newspaper, and needed about an 11 or 12 point of play at the end to, Although they they did outscore this team fifty four thirty six from a point where they trailed twenty two eleven, so you know if you want to look at it that way, but it was low it looked like low energy, didn't it, to you in the first half? And uh, you know the the good thing is, I mean, there have been teams before that wouldn't have won that game, and this one had enough talent and really, uh, as you mentioned, great free throw shooting in the second half to pull them through. Some really poor shot selection as well. You know. And maybe in some cases, you know, shots from players that might have been open, but you're like, maybe that's, that's not the shot to take. If you <laughs> There's know a I mean. reason it's... you're open. Yeah, as Gary exactly. used to say, that. there's a reason you're open. Well, um, you know, I, I thought also, guys, that uh, they're, they're still adjusting to Nick Smith coming back. You know, and Anthony Black was kind of the guy back there, and he had some good 20-plus point games and, and, and now then, Nick is a guy that's going to have the basketball a lot. He's going to shoot a lot. Um, and so I, I thought you saw maybe both Black and Council affected by that some last night. And that, But they'll. the good thing was uh, at halftime when they were walking in there, Anthony Black had his arm around Smith. I mean, there's nothing – it, it, there's no problem there. It's just that, you know, you're adjusting to a new guy <laughs> playing a lot of minutes, like 38 plus minutes last night in this lineup. And Nick was good. I mean, he, you could tell he's, he, the guy's a gamer. I mean, uh, not for nothing. He's, he, you know, rated as high as he is. So, um, I, I think, uh, I think they'll be okay. By the way, you know, Texas lost last night to Illinois. That, that was the team that beat Arkansas by 30. Well, we're a young team. We're going to have some some nights like that. I think we. I don't know if you expect it at 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 home. Uh, how was it to get D- Devo back in there? Almost getting thirty minutes in. And you're you're right. If Brazil's hurt, his length that's going to hurt us a little bit on the defensive end as well. Yeah, and you hope that's not serious. Um, yeah, Devo, I thought was really good last night. Ten points, ten rebounds. Uh, you can look at it. You know, I know his shooting percentage wasn't great, but uh, that uh, it, I'm sure he feels good about being needed like that and coming through just a week or so after uh, you didn't know what was going to go on with him so yeah that that was a, a and you know the other thing Matt is it, they really only played about seven guys effectively seven mm-hmm. eight maybe I mean uh, some guys got a few minutes so uh, it, it, you know Eric had just talked Monday night about not having had a team with this many guys I mean you know, he, he typically doesn't play much more than seven, seven and a half players. And then people say, well, you've got 10, 11. Well, last night he stayed to that one smaller group. Well, I thought yesterday might have been an opportunity, you know, for, for Jalen Graham to get a little more run. You know, he, he, he not only did he play well Saturday, but, you know, must said all the right things about his effort, I think, on the defensive end, too. And with Brazil hurt, like, I know they got different skill sets and everything, uh, but they're around the same height. And I thought at that point with Brazil down, you know, that, that Graham ends up getting more run. Wasn't the case. I don't know what to make of, 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 of Jalen Graham on this team because it's like every time he gets a chance to play more than a handful of minutes, 
he produces offensively. And I know there's now this like reputation that he doesn't hustle defensively and whatnot because maybe what have happened in Texas in that exhibition game, a couple of other games in November. I didn't see that on Saturday. And it sounded like he was doing all the right things. I just don't know what to make of him. But, you know, if Brazil isn't there, I mean, what are, what are you going to do? I mean, is, is, is Mikel Mitchell getting more minutes? Is Jalen Graham getting more minutes? Are you going to have Kamani get more minutes? It turned out it wasn't any of them yesterday. Yeah, I mean, he really relied on the group. He had like four guys played 30-plus minutes last night. I don't think Mikel Mitchell played either. You know, it's interesting. Monday night at Sassy's, uh, both uh, Mitchell, both Mitchell twins were there, and by the way, their their tray looked like it would feed a small army. You know, I <laughs> like bet, right? But uh, but Kel didn't play last night either. I don't think so. You know, whether that's we, we don't see practice, so we don't know how their practices were the last day or two, or whether it was just the matchups Eric was looking at. Imagine their grocery bill. Yeah, girl, when, the, when the mama <laughs> shopping for them. Oh, my goodness. Makai was, was really good, man. 13 uh, points and 14 rebounds. He, he's, you know, people were saying early in the year, well, they got everything except a center. Um, he's starting to to uh, sort of allay those concerns, I'd say. What do you make of uh, – I know I saw you at, at the women's game, too. Uh, uh, Sailor Poffenbarger now two weeks in a row, SEC Freshman of the Week. You know, you've – you got uh, Sam. Sam Spencer was the freshman of the week, the freshman of the year last year. Uh, you know, we just saw her drop thirty-two on her twentieth birthday. Sailor's playing really. The the women's team is playing incredibly well. Finally, get into the rankings and uh, have the third of a four-game homestand tomorrow night. They've been really exciting too. Yeah, hard to get in and hard to get out of that top twenty-five. They say sometimes, and they went from the twenty-eighth position, I guess, to twenty-one. Uh, and I, I like Carr. You know, she can really shoot the ball. Uh, but again, they, I think Mike's got about what seven, six, seven players that he, that he plays most of the time. And uh, Dowd is starting to play a little bit more. But you're right about Poffenbarger. I think she had a double double also last time. And they, you know, the, we'll know more. I think they play. I believe they play LSU on December 29th. So we'll know a lot more after that game. Well, we'll know a lot more. They, they go to the, the really, really later on this month. They get a really interesting trip. Uh, go to Creighton. Uh, that's the day that the Razorback men's team is in is in North Little Rock. The women's team is at Creighton. That's a top ten team. And then go out to uh, to San Diego and get a couple of really tough uh, tough teams out there. So I think I think we'll have a sense of them on that road trip. And then yes, the uh, the LSU game, which of course is the day after the Liberty Bowl. Who now does we don't you know the defensively Arkansas is getting kind of gashed as far as the players leaving are concerned uh, and now with Barry Odom taking the job at UNLV uh, I don't know it's like th- th- there's two different ways to go with that conversation it's like I don't want we don't need to like you know who do you think Arkansas gets as a defensive coordinator I just think it's an attractive job and it's a it's a pretty pivotal hire. Uh, in Sam Pittman's tenure now at Arkansas, the first time he replaced a coordinator. But I also look at, you know, what does this do to the Razorback defense for the Liberty Bowl? And I, the more I think of it, Grant, I just I just think we're going to see a really high-scoring game between those teams in Memphis. You know, Phil, uh, Wally wrote today that Penn State was missing a couple of players last year in that bowl game. <laughs> they were missing six starters. Arkansas, I think, was missing a player or two. This year, I counted up whether through injury or the guys opting out. It, that's about seven or eight starters. Uh, and, he, you know, Reed Bauer, of course, the punter is, is leaving also. So, I mean, that, that's a lot of guys not to have. And uh, I know that – I don't know what Kansas' situation is. Uh, both teams, you're right, have, have given up a lot of yards this year. So, uh, yeah, that <laughs> it sort of does look like a shootout, doesn't it? At least Arkansas has got K.J., uh, and he was enough to, to beat Penn State with pretty much last year, rushing 108 by himself in the third quarter. Well, it's it's an opportunity for the young kids to play, and they're going to keep it simple. Uh, that, that's what I think you're going to see in the bowl game is like, hey, man, let's, let's go out there and let's just react and play and don't think too much. Uh, because because you're I mean you're gonna just probably run in the same the same schematic stuff that you've been doing but they're if you're gonna have new guys in man just let them fly around let let and and like you said let KJ kind of win it on the offensive end yeah and and uh, Sam Pittman said something interesting last week he, he said you recruit every kid every day and uh, he mentioned the, these 13 practices they're gonna have 
in about what a 19 day period i guess uh that that really is like an extra spring practice it's like so, a camp yeah yeah whether that shows up in the game or not but it should help them from next year i would think well they are recruiting every i mean <laughs> The recruiting calendar is, is legitimately now 365 days a year. You're either recruiting high school players or you're, you're recruiting in, in an abstract way to guys that are thinking about transferring. I mean, you just and, – and then you're recruiting your own players. Uh, right. So it's, it's a whole different way of looking at what recruiting is, and it's the messages. I mean – what are you doing when you're going out and talking to high schoolers? You're talking about what they could look like at Arkansas. You know, what are you doing? It, it, it's not like you have conversations with your players throughout the season about this is why you got to stay here. You know, it's, it's, it's really just about how you communicate to them, how you talk to how you coach them. You know, sitting well, down I mean, and having and the, conversations <laughs> with them about it. Yeah, and the, and the Odom situation is interesting. You know, uh, John Husky, by the way, used to work in this area, did a good job all day Sunday, I know, working for Tulsa Television over there and uh, getting, I, I guess he was the one that got that, that Odom wasn't going to take. You know, the, the, the money was real close there at Tulsa and here. And also, it looked like it was at UNLV. Now, he's got some bonuses he can get, but I know there's probably some concern. Would he take a coach or two from Arkansas staff and so, you know, behind the scenes, you hear that maybe a coach here or there might not return next year. Maybe he'll take one of those coaches with him. So, uh, but I agree with you. It's a, it's a big hire on defensive coordinator. When, when can you, when can these players, because I think he might take a couple players with them too. I mean, you, you're kind of dropping down from an SEC. If there's some, if there's a few players that aren't as talented and aren't going to get to play uh, and you have those relationships with them, if, if they go with, with Coach Odom, do they have to sit out a year? Uh, no, you don't, you don't have to sit out of here, Phil, right? You can go right ahead and play. That's right. Yeah. As long as they hadn't transferred, uh, before they're a graduate student, they can, they can just, they can just go play. You know, I think, look, it's no surprise. Barry Odom took, took a, a head coaching position that, that was available here. But I mean, you don't take the UNLV job to stay at UNLV for more than like three or four years. Um, you know, that, that. Those are stepping stone jobs. You know, Tom Herman takes the job at Florida Atlantic. That's not to stay there for more than three or four years. I mean, it's Barry Odom has had that taste of Power Five and SEC coaching and that money that goes along with being a head coach at that level. Herman has too. You know, I mean, these are, these are coaches that are taking this job so that they can get the next job after that. Yeah, that's right. And I think they said on the telecast last, uh, the Missouri game that, that uh, Odom was going to take a head coaching job. I'm sure they, they were talking to him. Uh, three years he probably figured was long enough to be out after being a head coach four years and doing a pretty good job in Missouri. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does out there. UNLV has not done well uh, in recent years. Hey, last thing before I let you go, Grant, the uh, baseball winter meetings are finally getting a little bit wild. Uh, and I uh, read reports that the Cardinals, uh, the Cardinals lost Quintana. I think he signed uh, with the Mets, but it looks like they might get uh, Wilson Contreras from the Cubs. Weaken your arch rival and get stronger and honestly <laughs> better at that position too. Yeah, uh, Ali Marmol was even quote I, I quoted about him. I mean, uh, I, can you do that? Is that pampering? I don't, I don't know. And I, you know, then they thought uh, Judge was going to go to the Giants, and I just heard this morning. I guess he's getting what. 360 million for nine years to stay with the Yankees. So mm-hmm. that's a big one for them. Football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit make sure to use the promo code believe to receive your rewards that's b-l-e-a-v bet online where the game starts